Hong Kongers appear to be delivering an electoral drubbing to pro-establishment parties in district council elections, largely seen as a referendum on support for the government. North Asia correspondent Jake Sturmer has been up all night, all night in Hong Kong, bringing the details of this election to us. Uh, Jake, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, so what's the very latest on these results? Yeah, good morning, Joe. Uh, it seems the voters of Hong Kong are sending a very loud and very clear message. Of these 452 seats, we are starting to see a pretty clear trend. 201 seats have gone to the pro-democratic parties so far. Just 28 have gone to the pro-government parties, those pro-establishment candidates. And there are still 211 races yet to be called. Now, if you compare that to the last election, the last district council elections in 2015, the pro-democratic side only got 128 seats. Uh, so they have clearly well surpassed that. And the pro-Beijing candidates got around 300 seats. So wow. clearly, this, uh, this election, which was largely seen uh, as a referendum on support for the government, is, uh, is, is showing a pretty clear message about what voters are thinking. And they came out in record numbers, Joe. Uh, uh, three million people, roughly, uh, came out to vote yesterday. There were queues that stretched right around the block in some polling stations. Some people were waiting an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a huge turnout and people clearly wanted to have their say. Yeah, and so this is a massive win for the pro-democracy forces there. Uh, what, uh, was it kind of largely expected that it was going to be this strong a victory for the pro-democracy forces or not? Uh, look, you have to remember the pro-democracy side was coming off quite a low base. That 128 seats, now they're at the 211. So there was expectation that even if they pulled around uh, 200 seats, you know, a big swing, that, you know, that was uh, within the ballpark. Of course, we still have another 211 races to call, and the way that they swing will be quite telling. If it is and the trend continues, then it will be a very significant win for the pro-democracy side. And, but whether or not that'll translate into any leverage, well, that's now the big question. Yeah. And so explain for us what these uh, elections were for. Are they kind of like an equivalent to local councils in Australia? And is it, is it expected that this will translate to uh, kind of uh, the, yeah, the broader elections? Uh, and when are they going to be held? Yeah, so these uh, are essentially local district councillors. They deal with very local issues, noise complaints from your neighbours, messy streets, the placement of bus stops, those kind of things. And, uh, and so there are 452 seats in 18 district councils and whoever wins a majority of seats, whichever camp wins a majority of seats in those district councils, they get around 117 seats in the uh, 117 positions in the electoral committee that can elect Hong Kong's chief executive. Mm. Now, there are 1,200 positions that get to elect Hong Kong's chief executive. They only get 117. It is some degree of influence, but the rest are largely pro-Beijing stacked. So it's not like these local district councillors will be able to have significant influence and significant sway in the election of the chief executive. It really is more about the message that these results will send, whether or not the Hong Kong government will have to concede on some of the five demands of the protesters or whether China, uh, China will be able to uh, concede or, or direct the Hong Kong government to concede on any of those demands. Well, as, uh, you know, as, the, as the sun rises here and uh, people start to wake up and get a sense of uh, just how significant these results are, that's when we'll start to see. No doubt though, there is a degree of alarm and concern among the government and, uh, and also in China. Yeah. Are you expecting we'll see the protesters back on the street pretty soon? It's hard to say. In the last week, uh, you know, there, we had that very violent siege uh, at Polytechnic University and there were the running battles between police and protesters, those pitched battles uh, where tens of thousands, uh, we believe, came out onto the streets to try to distract police so they could try to break out their 
friends and protesters who were barricaded inside the Polytechnic University. That was Monday night, well, Sunday night, Monday night. Now, uh, there are still a few protesters inside Polytechnic University, but most have now left. And the fact that it has been calm, really, since Monday night here is quite telling. It seems the protesters wanted to make sure that these elections were uh, run without any claims of interference or intimidation. Now that we've got these results, I think it'll largely depend on what the government does in response. Will they offer any further concessions to protesters? If they do, well, that may cool things down and keep tensions much lower here. If they don't, well, it is very likely we will see those kind of running battles that we saw on the streets, uh, the kind that have, uh, that have been infamous for Hong Kong for the last few months. Mm. And we'll be looking out for any statements uh, from officials there in Hong Kong through the day. Are you hearing anything about Carrie Lam stepping up in the next 12 hours or so? Uh, we haven't heard anything uh, about Carrie Lam herself, but some of the unsuccessful candidates have started to speak, some of those unsuccessful pro-government candidates, and, uh, and so far they are laying the blame squarely at the foot of Carrie Lam. So whether or not Carrie Lam chooses to respond today or during her regular press conference later in the week, uh, the pressure is certainly mounting on her and her government.